Hello guys, I am Sean the Bro. We are here for some Fury Strike 80s beatdown programming tutorials. So I have promised this one for a bit and I promised I hadn't forgotten about it. Uh, let me see if I can move this down slightly. Cause I realized, there we go. I realized that might be in the way. So I, um, I promised this a few times to a few people. So thank you for waiting. I apologize it took so long. Part of the reason it took so long was because I was actually out of space on my computer and I was waiting to get an external. And now that that's done, I can download a lot more games and, you know, actually continue a lot of the Let's Plays that I had started. So, let's get into this. I won't waste too much of your time, but I do want to say, uh, as a disclaimer, to start, because every video of these I make, even when I say this in the beginning... <laughs> There are going to be bugs in this. There are going to be some issues with it. It's not going to be that polished. It was a student game. I made it in college with a few of my friends uh, as our final project. We worked with Rooster Teeth with it, which was amazing. Uh, got to work with Chad James, Chris Kikinos, Brian Riley, all sorts of great people. And it was a ton of fun. So we did this at Full Sail University. Uh, and I figured I could show it off of it. Uh, people do seem to enjoy it. It's a fun game, but it's more, it's one of those games when you get together and it's in the moment. Like we had it in an arcade cabinet when we showed it off at RTX. Um, and when you do that, like it makes it really enjoyable. A lot of people on Steam don't know that's a student game. Um, I don't, I, like, I feel like that should be not obvious, but I feel like they should realize that, you know, when the Full Sail University logo splashes up at the beginning. Sorry, my mouse was in the center. He, in, here come the incoming comments. Move the mouse from the center of the screen when you make a video. I know, I know, I get it. But anyway, I feel like when the Full Sail University uh, thing pop, the splash screen pops up at the start, people should know that it's a student game, but that's fine. We're, we're going to ignore that, and I'm just going to show you the actual mechanics, because I'm not expecting this to be the best game ever, but it's something that I am actually pretty proud of and do enjoy. So, we have four modes. Uh, story mode, arcade mode, versus mode, practice mode. So, story is what we're going to be showing today, so I won't go into that too much. Arcade mode is basically the same as story, where it gives you, like, uh, basically a story arc for each character. But arcade mode, like most fighting games... Since it's for every character and not the main characters that the story focuses on, it's going to be less in depth. For versus mode, it's if you want to play against your friends. And practice mode is for if you want to do all that crazy stuff like turn on your hitboxes, give yourself infinite health, infinite stamina, test your moves and combos. We're going to do story mode. I'm going to jump into it. So one of the things I do want to say is it's probably going to take a while to load each individual map, which is something we wanted to work on by using level streaming, but we never got around to it. And we had already been pretty much done the entire project before we even looked at this. So now I've done level streaming at work, uh, you know, like in other projects that I've done. But at the time, we hadn't really known how to do it. And also, like I said, it was too late to kind of get started on it. We were all getting jobs. So there were five of us that worked on it uh, from a programming standpoint. But by the end, uh, there were only two that could continue to work on it. Everybody left to go to work. I was thankfully a month behind. I started my schooling a month earlier. Um, so when I caught up to them for the final project, then, you know, I was like, well, I have a little bit more time because I hadn't expected to graduate just yet. So I continued to stay for the internship and I brought it all the way to RTX and I appeared on their live stream and it was a ton of fun. So thank you everyone involved. And here's what we made together. So uh, Trey here on the left is your standard like redemption arc character. Um, I've already played this on my computer before so that's why it's kind of skipped the intro sequence but basically a message box pops up and Trey is after this guy Typhoon because he's a gang leader and the gang he's like the the 80s redemption arc <laughs> uh, protagonist here so let's just do a fight here I'll read the dialogue in some wacky voices there's not that much of it so it should go pretty quick so, just to catch you up, Toby's Trey's good friend and partner in his training. So, Toby, 
He says, I can't let you leave, Trey. Sensei Jackie wouldn't want you to seek vengeance. You may damage your honor if you go. And Trey goes, My brother deserves to have justice. I don't care about honor. He does, but you can't just rush into a battle. We need to wait for Sensei to return. Get out of my way, Toby. I don't want to fight you. Teach me some of the stuff you learned while on your Musha Shigyo. Let's see if it was enough. If that's what you want, time to see if my warrior's pilgrimage paid off. So there we go. Uh, I think I already changed my controls to the keyboard. If not, I'll probably have to do that now. So, yep, I can only crouch, so I have to do that now. Whoops, okay. The problem is, I don't know what the controls are. There it is. So, for some reason, my <laughs> I have such weird controls on here because they're all set to be the... Uh, I know this is cutting off the word controls up here just because of the way it's recording, but this is the controls menu, so you can actually bind it to whatever you want. Right now, it's bound to a gamepad, and for some reason, player two crouch, I have his left mouse button. I probably did that by accident. Then we have set one keyboard for both, but you want to play with two people in versus mode. You can both play on a keyboard, you just need to set your controls. So I'm going to run the setup controls, um, but I'm going to set it to things that I can actually use. Black. Oh, I usually do, yep, and taunt. Maybe. Okay, and then I don't really have to set up controls for you, so I'm going to leave that there. So here we go. So one thing that is um, actually very exciting to me about this game is that all the moves in this game are actually, they were actually mocapped in a mocap studio. So, um, sorry, I was trying to, I was trying, trying to think because sometimes the characters get stuck, which I'll admit is one of the bugs that still exists where they wait for about five seconds before they, hit. I don't know if that was put on there on purpose. I didn't do that part of the AI specifically. I did other weights of the AIs and stuff. So I did not, I, do, I don't really know, whoops, that was my fault. I don't really know if that's intended as like one of those, like because they can take no action as an action, I know that. But five seconds seems like a really long time. Uh, one of the things that's really interesting, what I was trying to say, is they were all mo -capped. So all these moves are actual martial artist moves for that specific field, uh, for whatever martial art that they know. So we had a bunch of people do different characters and that way it's realistic. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry for doing that, Toby, but I must finish this. So I did the entire story flow, um, the ranking system, which apparently I'm not good at. <laughs> um, is that for the record? It's very hard to get an S rank. You have to pretty much perfect your opponent each time. So yeah, I don't know about all that. If that's going to be easy or not, but. Uh, it's not. Actually, let me just <laughs> let me just change and say that. No, I'm rambling a lot. I have a lot to say because all these things are going through my head at the same time. Like, I I have a story about how bad the ranking system actually was originally, where you couldn't get above an F. <laughs> just because I don't know. I guess we thought you'd be getting a lot more points, and we totally calculated it wrong. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But. To me, this is like a trip down memory lane because I've, you know, I've played this game since we put it out, but actually going through it and trying to explain it again reminds me of all those things that are just hilarious. So let's let's focus back on the game a little bit. So if, this is the street level. The last level was the dojo. That's like the that's basically the first level that we had. The street level is the level for the thugs which is kind of like a wave mode level. So you can play this in Thug Survival, which I'm not sure if I ever made it into the game or not. But we have this mode in story, which is the same thing. It just has some dialogue before. So is your boss in there? Who wants to know? It's the brother of the man he murdered. <laughs> so Sean's Pizza in the back is uh, my pizza place. It's a little tribute to me. So I run a pizza shop on this awful street where people can just beat each other in the right lane of the street and somehow the cops don't come or are too scared to come break this fight up. Uh, 
Uh, so Bohemian Rap Rhapsody is uh, a joke of a guy's name, a professor that we had. His name was uh, Bahim. I forget his last. Oh, that was probably his last name. I forget his full name, but his name was Bahim. That's what we called him. So you know, Bohemian Rhapsody naturally. I just want to say that there's a cop right there, and these guys. <laughs> Oh, these guys are just jamming out. Okay. So, uh, this is a this is like a thug mode, and that's what we call it. What it is is it's a wave survival. So you have to in the story mode version, you have to defeat seven enemies, and once you defeat the seven, I'm kind of just mashing buttons. I gotta be honest. You have combos and everything, but I only know a few of them. And Trey is actually probably, he probably has the least combos because he is the easy character to learn where he has like all these two hit attacks. So. But you follow the arrow. Pedro's Cafe, Pedro was the environment artist for a lot of the levels. We had two as far as I know. Uh, actual, no, no, we had three, I apologize. So we had Eric, we had Pedro, why am I? That's weird. I just got a message that popped up on my right side of the screen. I think we're good. Um, it's something about memory allocation, but I think it was from my computer and not the game. So we have Eric, we have Pedro, and we have uh, Kenneth. Sorry, I was trying to call him Keith, and I was like, I know that's not correct. Not Keith, Kenneth. So they worked on the level, so you'll see some some Easter eggs to them. I keep doing that. You'll see some Easter eggs to them uh, within the game. Where's your boss? He's inside the hotel, top floor. Good. Sir, we have a problem. <laughs> okay, so... Hey, you got a heavy finish that time, that's good. We got rank B. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take another quick break here and finish my thoughts. I had a bunch of thoughts. I need to finish them. So we made this in Unreal and C++. So Unreal Engine. I mean, it was 4.2, I believe, and C++, whatever the latest version was, which I think is 11 at the time. I think that's the latest now, even I'm not sure. That's what we use at work. That's what I'm used to, so who knows. Anyway, um, actually, we don't use that at work, but <laughs> we I've used that outside of work for pretty much the entire time that I've been programming it outside of Full Sail, so that's what I'm used to. We, let's see. So it took about eight months in total. It was about six months of project for the actual just, hey, this is Fury Strike. And then we were going to RTX and I was going on the live stream in Austin. So we continued working on it for another two months to polish it and add in the rest of the characters. Cause we had pretty much the story mode done and arcade mode done. Versus was still needing some work because the flow of the battles was a little bit different. And then practice mode actually had hitboxes to add and things like that, but we had planned for that, so that only took a little bit of extra work. So the other two months, like I said, was mainly polished. There were a few things that we had to add in there. And then uh, after we went to RTX, we got some feedback from the players about how the characters were balanced, and we saw, like, we actually took data from how many wins they had as opposed to how many times the character was chosen. And there was a, I think it was George, which you'll meet later. He had been picked like 300 times and he had only won. Or no, it was Rooster Ranger is who it was. He was picked like 300 times and I think he won. He, he was very underpowered and we hadn't realized it at the time. So that was a cool experience to learn. Uh, the last thing that I had started that I wanted to finish here was um, there's a lot of tributes to the different characters that, or the different, <laughs> different people that worked on the game. So if you see any names, it's most likely one of us, or it has some relation to who we are. There's also some Easter eggs I will point out outside of that, as well as, um, an Easter egg you can trigger in the cheats. So I'll go over all of that. 
This is Audrey. Uh, d yes, we realize that her vest says IBF. That's because we flip her mesh. So that's actually FBI, but we never felt like changing it because we didn't have the time. We were already severely pressed for time. So, freeze, get on the ground. I can't do that, miss. Special Agent Audrey of the SPB, you will stand down or be arrested for impeding an investigation. Well, I guess you're gonna have to arrest me then. I guess you'll have to arrest me then. Excuse me, Trey uh, forgot his line. So, Audrey is probably the best character in the game, if we're being honest. Um, she, not only does she have the highest win rate at RTX, I think, in my opinion, she's the best character. And I'm pretty sure her Dan, the producer of the project, also prefers Audrey to every other character in the game. She also has one of the more diverse movesets because she can actually taunt into attacks, which is pretty cool. So you can taunt and then attack from it so you can taunt to you know get your opponent closer to you when you taunt in this game you also gain stamina back uh, stamina is something I touched on but didn't really mention each of each character does different uh, d d has a different amount of stamina so for example the bigger characters usually have a lot less stamina but do more damage so that's that bar that you see in the at the bottom the blue one that fills up pretty quickly that bar actually determines how many moves you can do. So when you're at low on health, you don't do a ton of, uh, you can't do a ton of moves. You can only do a few moves at a time, but you do more damage. So the reason we did that is because we have this, instead of like in a fighting game, like for example, Killer Instincts comes to mind a lot with this, where you, you can easily put someone in a corner and it's very hard for them to get out of it. Um, even good players, like if two good fighters are fighting against each other and one's in the corner, the one in the corner is usually significantly in a worse position. So here, sure, you're still kind of screwed over a little bit because you have less health and you can do less moves, but your opponent should be a little bit more careful with you. It doesn't really come into play that much in story mode, but in versus mode, we actually were noticing we were playing differently when someone had less health and was doing a lot more damage with their attacks, especially with characters who can do a lot of combos, like Rooster Ranger. He's got like a bit all strings together. Um, when you do that, when you're low on health, you can pretty much take out like 50% of the opponent's health. So it makes a, a genuine difference. Well, you were a good opponent. Next time I hope we meet in a better situation where you aren't trying to arrest me. Of course the elevator doesn't work. So this is the hotel lobby. Should have said that earlier, but that's what this level is technically called. I was awful yet again. All the music was done by Dan's brother, so it's all unique music, which is something I appreciate a lot because with all the other games that were happening, um, you know, other projects, they didn't have the time to work with that, so they pretty much all the music was from somewhere that was free to use, but it wasn't exactly their, uh, you know, their own. From a programming side? <laughs> okay. So this is the gym. So George, George is a little flamboyant. Um, so no offense for the way I'm going to do his voice. I'm going to... I'm not intentionally going to do it bad, but I don't know how exactly... The way we kind of imagine him sounding is like we made him really over the top. So, but let me guess. You work for the leader of this gang? And George would be like, You bet I do! <laughs> and I can't let you get to Boss Typhoon Tyndall! Well then, big man, I guess I ought to beat you too. I'm sorry, that's cringy. I don't like using that term because that in itself, I think, is cringe love. Good luck. One man is only one man has ever beaten me. I have stamina for days. So I don't know why we have to say that. That is just a strange thing to say and is really over the top. But um, so 
Uh, this is not a joke. This is actually true. So the AI learns the way you play, and for some reason, uh, George does not learn the same way, despite deriving from the same base class. So all he does, for some reason, he thinks that he should not move to beat you, and he should wait for you to come to him. I don't know why he learned that way. Um, obviously it's a, some strong, he will walk on occasion, but I would say about 80% of the time, 80% of the matches you play against him, he will choose to just stay there and wait for you to come attack him. So that's something we probably should have fixed, but again, we didn't have a ton of time. Um, but yeah, so George is a pretty, pretty great character all around. He's probably my favorite actual character like Audrey's my I think she's the best one to play as but George is just hilarious because his dialogue is funny even in arcade mode including his wins and his losses all that stuff I lost focus of the window somehow there we go um his outfits everybody has two outfits and he does actually do a, a good amount of damage now we buffed him after RTX and he does pretty well so, something I haven't brought up now, and I really should have, is you can't jump in this game. You can do jump attacks, which is when you press up, you know, you put in any whatever input you want, and you'll do a different attack, punch, kick, heavy, or special attack, but you actually can't jump. And that's because even though the game itself is following the, 80 tro the 80s tropes, we want to go more with the actual martial arts style of things, so that you weren't jumping 10 feet in the air. We originally had jumping, but it was causing a lot of issues, uh, to be honest. And then we ended up fixing all the issues, and then we were like, well, this doesn't really feel right for a lot of these moves anymore. So we took it out entirely. Uh, and I'll show you how you get on the opposite side of each other in a second. So he can give, he can give some brutal hugs. You'll see a game playing in the background. I believe that's Rats, which is Eric's game. Anything else? I don't know. Uh, I think that's about it. I know I was kind of all over the place. I'll go through the entire story and continue to explain it. But I just... This one really... I don't know. It gets me really excited. I had a lot of fun working on this project. It was also the hardest I've ever worked in my life, though. I will admit. So, I, I just have a lot to say about this one. Unlike the other ones where we just worked on it and it was fun and I was clean and cut. <laughs> That's my British friend, so he, did, he just found out about the Area 51 memes today. Which is why he, he thinks it's serious, I think. Uh, so... Sir, please stop. You're interrupting the session here. So this is Karma. She is a drug runner slash like, uh, she's one of Typhoon's men for basically, I don't know what the term would be. Drug runner makes her sound a little more e evil than she is. She's kind of just like a cargo transfer. So it could be drugs, but it could be weapons, anything like that. Basically someone who, you know, whatever weapons dealer i don't know she's something like that who knows but so karma uh i don't know if i can do what voice would she have so you're the one no that's george hold on hold on hold on so you're the one who's been beating up all of typhoon's goons yeah and i'm gonna beat him up too well i can't let that happen typhoon owes me a lot of money or typhoon owes me money Ty typhoon, not Typhon, not Prey, Typhon, not the aliens from Prey. Typhoon. I keep saying Typhon, I apologize. I always have, and I don't know why. And I always get paid. I don't know why everyone has like a slight country accent that's very bad. Well, sorry then, but you'll have to wait on that money. Listen, handsome, ain't no one getting in the way of me and my money. Not even some kung fu master. So back off. Well then, I'm sorry that I have to beat you too. This is the spa. This is the pool. It's got a little sauna in front of it. So, I mentioned the blocking earlier. Um, 
or the you can actually dash through your opponents. That's how you get on the other sides of them, and it can actually lead to some very interesting gameplay. Personally, when I play fighting games, I jump a ton. So to me, it's a big change. And when I initially had it, I did not like it, I'll admit. Um, when I started playing it in verses and could actually see... That's her block, by the way. Uh, when, when I initially was playing it in verses and I could actually see that it made the gameplay a lot different from other fighting games, I actually started to enjoy it. It did take some time. I'll be honest, but it leads to a fun experience because, look, I can get her to chase me over here. Come here, Karma. And then I can dash through her, and then she is in the corner. If you're jumping in games, it's a lot harder because they can kind of predict when you're going to jump a little bit. Or at least uh, do an overhead move where they'll do, like, some sort of kick. I'm trying to think it. Yeah, I like that one. Where he can actually hit in the air, and if you were trying to be in the air, he might actually hit you. So it makes it a lot easier to get out of the corner, which is good. Maybe you'll get a job that doesn't involve working for a crime boss. By the way, you can block... So perfect match means that you did not lose a round. Perfect round means you did not get hit. Forget who's next. I think it's Don. We're coming up on the end here. I think we have two more than Typhoon. Or no, we have two more including Typhoon. If this is Don, then Typhoon's the next one. It's been a while, so I can't remember. But that's all the characters I can think of. Yeah, this is Don. So, all right. So Don's here. Uh, Don is the second in command. Uh, he is actually one of my... I think he's probably the best-looking character. I don't know if it's just his muscle tone or what. But I like him a lot. What I wanted to say about him is... He has a cool smoke bomb ability. When she just throws a smoke bomb at the ground, that's it. But it damages your opponent. And I just really appreciate that. By the way, it's his best move by far. And the AI very well knows that. So he's going to spam the heck out of it. Okay, done. <laughs> I was trying to do like a strongman voice, but uh, I'll do something laid back. Do you want to get to the boss? Then you'll have to get through me. Very well. So this map right here, this map, the arcade, is my favorite map in the game. Because all these uh, games that you're seeing play in the background on the arcade machines, are actual games that people have made for Full Sail. So, The Treacherous Ascent is one of the programmer's games. His name is Brennan, and I believe Matt also worked on that game. And then Godsend, or no, you know what? Treacherous Ascent is David's game. I apologize. Godsend is Matt and Brennan's game. Um, Bad Manners on the right, you should recognize that game. I'll go over to that next round so you can see the arcade cabinet that Eric did a great job doing. So, if we come over here, Godsend is their game. Like I said, we have a Ruby console, if you see that. We have new RTS <laughs> arcade. And then we have Bad Manners, which you should know very well. Uh, if you've watched the Bad Manners video, not, don't worry about it. But Bad Manners is my game that I worked on for, whoops, that I worked on for my midterm project at Full Sail. So you can see it playing in the background there. It's the uh, area with the final boss. I think that's extremely cool. You should have tried harder. I know, move the mouse. Everyone's going to be like, move the mouse. It's in the way of the screen. Okay, so I'm not going to get anything above a B. I got a B once. It's possible to get an S. Trust me, I've done it. But today is not that day. I, I really don't remember almost any of the combos. And like I said, Trey doesn't really have any. So to get an S with him, you kind of have to block a lot more. And I have not been blocking very much at all. I think I blocked twice. I don't even know if I actually succeeded in blocking or if I was too late. So this is going to be Typhoon. We're going to be on the rooftop. 
so Typhoon is tall as heck, uh, and his mesh was really big. So you scale down a little. Your ninja guys just the ones cheering him on. The one in the background, it's just he makes me laugh every time I see him. Like he is excited about this fight. Here for me, I assume. I know who you are. Your brother wanted to have been a valuable member. <laughs> it sounded like a text to speech reader. Your brother would have been a valuable member to my team. We could have saved the city, but he turned me down. I will succeed where he failed. <sighs> I see you won't learn from his mistake. There we go. The music for the rooftop is amazing, by the way. Whoops. I wish. Sorry, I'm doing this at an angle because my mic is over to the right where it usually is. And since I'm not doing the face cam, I can't judge how close I am to it. Because I actually look at the camera to tell if I'm close enough to the mic instead of looking at the mic. So I'm actually seated over by the mic, and now my hand is over to the right side of the keyboard. So that's why I keep pressing the Windows button. I apologize for that. Let's go, Typhoon. You can't beat me. I'm a master at this game. He's got two of them in particular. I'll use some of his jumping moves. The jumping moves are actually really good. They do... They do quite a bit of damage, and they have a lot of invulnerability frames. So, honestly, they're probably one of the best bets if you're trying to get the perfect. You should block. That's my taunt, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> you are finished. Hold your breath, but I could be wrong. So we finished the actual... Uh, game. We finished Trey's arc. There is a secret character that sometimes shows up, um, and he's usually the actual colors that you see down here, the green and blue, but since it's Rooster Teeth, uh, we were like, we, we were thinking of a wacky character. And then, you know, we're like, we're doing this with Rooster Teeth. We should do the Rooster Ranger. So, <laughs> He was usually green and blue, but now he's red and white to represent Rooster Teeth. Those are his alternate skins in story mode. He's red and white. Ha! Another evil doer! <laughs> your cells cannot... Wait. Your cells? Like, okay. I, I don't think I read this before, actually. Your cells cannot hold the Dark Rooster Ranger. Which, he, he's the Dark Rooster Ranger, because in the story mode he's fighting you, but... In reality, he's just Rooster Ranger. I will defeat you and turn it, turn you into the proper authorities. Okay. I don't think I've read this before. I'm not a part of this gang. Lies! You're just scared of the mighty Rooster Ranger. Okay, cool. I actually don't remember reading that. It's funny. I remember he was pretty wacky, but I remember his arcade dialogue actually more than this. So now he is actually pretty good. Uh, so he stands a pretty good chance of beating you because we intentionally made his AI pretty good. We, um, man. Again, he knows the two, see he might, okay. See the double dam, no joke, the double damage thing that you get from the rage mode at the end is what saved me there. I was totally gonna be dead. This is the seller, by the way. It was originally much gorier, and we're like, we probably don't need that. You can see the little like rain, or like the drops from the ceiling, and the weird atmospheric particles. I think they're a very nice effect. Get out of here! You're trash. <laughs> You're one weird dude, but your heart's in the right place. You may have bested me this time, evil doer. Next time, evil will not prevail. Rooster Ranger away. Come by our dojo sometime. Or, come by our dojo sometime. After this quest for vengeance, I protected my friends and family. I've also inadvertently saved the city from a tyrant and his underlings. It felt good to do that. I was reading that. 
So there's your scores for each of the levels. And then you enter your initials, like any good fighting game, or arcade game for that matter. And then, I can't remember, I was actually messing with the folder on my computer, so I might have screwed up. Yeah, let's check out the credits. I made these credits. I am very proud of these credits. You know why? They kept getting changed every 10 seconds. No offense, Dan. They just, it, it was hard for me to keep the formatting the same. But I'm very proud of them. I think they looked, I think they came out very well. So all the people you see here, um, you know, they, we all worked very well together. And so I'm Sean the Bro, Patrick Kyler the Second. Duncan, Blueprint Master Reynolds, David Crane, Matthew Muni, Brennan Rodriguez. Those are the programmers. But all these people were extremely helpful in making this game. We had Patrick Kelly as our... Uh, Dan's our producer, so Patrick Kelly, I guess, was like our head producer. He was like the studio lead slash mentor of the whole thing, and he, he's helped make it happen a lot. So thank you, all of you. To this amazing game um i know it's a student project like i said so it's not perfect in any way and honestly if you're playing by yourself it gets boring after the first like i personally was able to go through story mode and all the arcade modes and still enjoy myself um but versus is where it's at and practice is actually good half late night for the music which is dan's brother not sure if he wants you to know that so i apologize but I thought that was cool. I, I thought that was very cool they did that. Everyone at Rooster Teeth. While you're at it, go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> hashtag free promotion here. While you're at... Okay, I can exit the credits now. Oh, um, okay, let me say two things. While you're at it, go ahead and check out Chris Kakinos. He does Twitch on Monday, I believe. Monday and Thursday. I might be wrong on that, but check out... I just look him up. He has it on his Twitter, uh, Christopher. <laughs> I think it's, uh, here, I can get it. I think he deserves it because he was very helpful, and I have been watching him, and it's enjoyable, and I don't watch Twitch streamers, so I think it's worth it. Hey, someone retweeted, come check out Fury Strike 80's Beatdown just today. So that is actually great. Years after it came out. Well, like a year. It's Chris the Fur. C H R I S T H E, capital F, capital E, capital R. So, anyway, um, you can speed this up, so that's what I'm going to do. But I don't think I can do it yet. There's some conditions you have to meet. Like, I think I have to be Audrey's story arc as well. It's basically the same thing, just different dialogue. And you play as Audrey, obviously. But if you are to enter the Konami code, or click on this several times. Click on. Well, play the sound. That might have worked, but I'm pretty sure I disabled it before that. If you click on those names, then you actually can get an Easter egg where you can unlock the programmer art versions. And yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't exist. So. Uh, oh, that's true. We don't fight Orion and Trey's arc. You know what? I'll show you practice mode real quick with Orion that way you can see all the characters in the game oh no program art did work <laughs> oh, sorry I I forgot I forgot that it does work on occasion um I think it only works maybe in practice mode is but we we determine some other factors where it's like it won't we can't have it working all the time because people are going to be confused <laughs> so if you click on the names in the the programmers names in the credits or if you do the konami code you get programmer art mode and i don't have a second controller unfortunately so rip me i'm trying to do this so you can see it because it's quite funny but uh i don't think it's going to be possible but e each of these has a programmer art rendition I might have the file so I can show you, but this is the thugs. I, I actually did this one. Those are my initials. Uh, he's It's a thug with the infinity gauntlet. So yeah, that's, where, where is my mouse? I was trying to click this because I don't have a second controller. Player one is selecting. 
So did we see every map though? We didn't see the beach or the alley. And then here's random. And the gym actually has an alternative. So I'll let you go and see. Oh, here the program art mode for the levels works though. So you can see these at the least. Dojo, very, very good, very successful here. Street, that's, yep. The beach, you got a shark in here with some blood. These are pretty ripped dudes. The alley. I don't know what is going on here. Um, the hotel lobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I know Matt did that one. Um, the gym, Christmas sale on big steroids and STD needles, only $50. The pool, the arcade with, hey, this is mine. You got different names on there. Shing Shang making an appearance. Rooftop. Training room hit me. Very nice. Very nice. I, that's a good surprise. I did not know that that still was in. I kind of forgot. Oh, I should not do this. I should probably do beach. And then you can do whatever. I'm actually going to leave him standing. Uh, I'll put in hitbox display and I don't think I picked Orion because I'm an idiot so I'm going to pick Orion as the opponent I'll just do a quick match here then I'll end it but <laughs> I'm glad you got this will probably take a while actually whoops I did not ever load up the beach level before, so it has to compile all the shaders. So we might, okay, I was gonna say we might be waiting here for a minute or two. Okay, so we got our hitbox display, uh, which is, you know, it shows your hitbox. So when you crouch, it makes it smaller, and then it shows you the hitboxes, the yellow. It's hard to see right now. Uh, the shaders on the beach, I think, are actually a little, a little crazy. But it's hard to see right now, but it is possible to see. When you initially attack, there's a yellow um, hitbox hit that comes up. That one was easy to see it with. There's a yellow one. That's the area that says, hey, this person could be able to block from here. I don't know why this one in particular is so wide. But uh, then there's a red one that pops up above it, which is where it actually starts doing damage if it hits their hitbox. So if they collide, like right here. Uh, that's probably my favorite move. You can also combo out of that into a clap, which is awesome. And that's it, really. I just want to show you this is Orion. This is the suit dude, just the suede, maybe. Very nice. I know Toby's combo. I don't know why your proximity are. Maybe I can. Maybe I can. Hold on. But then we're done after this for real, but I think it would be worth it. I'm going to shrink this down. I'm going to close this game. So you'll be looking at nothing for the moment. So give me a second. Excuse you. There you go. Steam apps. Here we go, Fury Stream. Content. Well, two things. So I'll make it up to you. One, I will. This is still because I tried to exit while it's loading, so I'll show you that. <laughs> um, this is still trying to get out of there, so ignore that. 100 hours in this game. But if you want to check it out, it would be really cool of you. Um, it would make me really happy. It doesn't really do anything for us, so if you don't, I'm not going to be offended. I'll be honest. But if you did, it would be cool. Again, it's a student game, so <laughs> there's going to be bugs. It's going to take a while to load the full uh, coding mechanics. I don't have the source code yet, but I can, I can grab it. I still have the depot, and I can still pull from it. I've already done it several times after I've deleted it and after the project works. Same with Bad Manners. So if you want to see any more of those, let me know. Manners, game. No, 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 no. There we go. There we go. Sorry. Audacity gave me a message telling me it was going to crash, but I was able to save it. So I'm just adding this part on to the end, and it's okay.
I'm going to leave that me saying no in there, though, because I think that might be kind of funny. <laughs> I don't know. I was actually genuinely nervous. So there you can see what my voice sounds like visualized. But anyway, guys, I'll let you go. Thank you for watching this video with me. Let me know if you'd like to see more or if you'd like me to see if you'd like to see some actual programming in Unreal and C++ or any other language, honestly. I know Python, Visual Basic, C++, C Sharp, HTML5. Uh, I know how to use Unreal and Unity and make a custom engine. So if you need help with any of that or if you'd just like to see an intro video on any of those, let me know. I'd be happy to do it. I love programming, so it would get me excited if you are interested in that. Thank you guys for watching. I am Sean the Bro. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe this video at all. If you like it, I'd appreciate it. But it does nothing other than give me, you know, make me happy when I see that you liked it. Subscribing is what's important. It lets you see my other videos so that I can get more recognition for what I do. So if it was worth it to you, please subscribe. I'll, you know, and if you have any ideas in mind, for real. Doesn't have to be programming. I do a lot of gaming videos. Just let me know. I'll, have, I'll be happy to do them. Thank you all for watching. You can download it for free on Steam. Fury Strike 80 Speed Down. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you later, guys.